Here are nine new features with the Logic Pro 11.1 update. First one's pretty simple. It's just in the odd cases that you wanna change some tracks in the mixer like this, you can actually move them around now. I won't be using this a lot because I just have gotten into the flow of organizing them in the session window, but it's there now in the mixer if you want to. It is sometimes helpful to organize bus sends and, and things like that. Number two is the biggest one, uh, the one you're gonna wanna take, if any one from this video, this one, plug and search. A no-brainer tool that every DAW has, I think maybe, except Logic, it's here now. Go to your plugins and if I just want a Valhalla room verb or if I want a compressor, I don't have to do any, anything other then hover where I would typically add a plugin, click, and then the search bar is already default highlighted and ready to go. So I just have to start typing a name of a plugin that I want. EQ, compression, reverb. This goes for stock plugins and paid plugins. So <laughs> I made a lot of videos before on like organizing your plugins in, in folders like this. Those days are over now where now it's just all based on search. So it's not only for plugin effects, you can do this for instruments. If I'm on a, if I add a software instrument, instead of going and searching or adding the software instrument, I can just search for it now. So if I want a Juno instrument, there's my Juno, or if I want piano, uh, et cetera. This extends even more to outputs and bus sends as well. So if you want to output it to a specific stack or another aux track something, you can search for, for it in here. Again, it extends even more into, uh, into the plugins. So if you're, let's say, uh, doing like a sidechain compression on, on a bass or something. So let's add a compressor by searching for it. Compressor, and then within com the compression, we have sidechain where we can search for that element that we want to sidechain to before you'd had to go and sometimes this list could be like hundreds of tracks, so you'd have to figure it out. Now you can just, you know, side chain it to the kick, um, if I spell it right, and, and it, it's easy. It, search is huge. Honestly, this is gonna save you months of time. Number three, a new reverb plugin. Really great sounding reverb plugin to be free. It's called Quantic Room Simulator, so let's use the search. We just have to go search Quantic, but I'll show you where it is. It's basically in the stock reverb folder. This, I just like right away, the design looks really cool. It kind of reminds me of the Slate uh, reverb design. You have lots of presets here. Again, great presets, but it's just, it sounds clean. Let me show you on this uh, lead vocal here. Let's add it. Let's search Quantec. Cause I fell in love with the wrong damn person. Help. Super clean. I mean, this is, I didn't do anything to it. To be a free reverb, I think this is something I'll be using. Maybe it's just excitement that I'm feeling right now and I'll get over it quickly. Number four, bouncing regions in place. A little different than what you typically could have. So sometimes you would have a use case maybe of lots of regions and you wanted to keep these regions in place. You can now do that. If you bounce this region in place, you have the option of choosing a file, a file per track or a file per region. So if I do go file per region and I bounce this down, you'll see what that looks like. It will keep all these regions, but have it bounced down. Number five is the mastering assistant. Nothing's new really in the mastering assistant that I know of, but I do know that I have often clicked this button and been so annoyed because you have to either hold command period to take it away and it just, it kind of can clog your computer. So just go to Logic Pro settings view and then to the mixer tab and just click this off. I know that this will be off. Now that I've put it off, I won't ever probably put it back on. If you're not using the mastering assistant, just do that and save yourself the headache. Number six, creation dates. You can get creation dates on tracks and regions simply by going to view show creation date or if you'd prefer show last modification date. I find these helpful specifically because I'm in and out of Logic projects a lot. And if I'm doing different versions or if I forget where I was with a certain project, when it comes to vocals too, it's nice to know what regions have been edited last or when you created them. So if I'm working on this vocal here, I can see that this one 
was created the October 28th at 9.17 a.m. And I can see, oh, this one was created at 9.21, so it wasn't the same you know, take. It was in a different part of the comp. If you're just in and out one day with a song, this probably isn't helpful, but it's nice when you're in and out of sessions constantly and you're 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 forgetting the context of the song. Number seven, erasing plugins. You go over here, let's say we're on this uh, lead vox verse and I'm like, ah, I don't want this little plate reverb anymore. I had to go click and I go no plugin. Well, now you can just hover over the plugins and hold command and get this little eraser button and just take that away. Um, same thing for, for buses. This was so annoying to go to the here and then no send. Two clicks. Now just one thing, hold command and just, yeah, delete, erase them. Number eight is share songs to voice memos. I actually just saw this this morning when I was bouncing at my song. Share song to voice memo. To be honest, something I probably won't do, but it is cool there if you are using the Voice Memos app a lot. Um, I do use it for demos and stuff, but I'm just so used to going Command B and then having this bounce dialog so I can get the right bit rate or MP3 if I want. I assume it's synced right to your iPhone, which is probably the most beneficial part to that. Because it's like using that Apple Cloud technology. Number nine, customizing your control bar and display. This one's big. When you go to this drop down box and go customize control bar and display, the biggest thing here, besides anything else that you haven't added, is the sample rate and buffer size 441 and 1024. This is big because I'm constantly going, you know, Logic Pro settings or command, comma, at changing this. Um, the buffer size, or I don't change the sample sample rate much, but I do change the buffer size. Even with these new features, Logic is a really hard software to battle and grasp, especially when you're just beginning. It's why you should watch this video right here. It's my Logic Pro formula that's transformed my music and it's something I do and still follow today to release hundreds of songs. So if you're just starting with Logic and you find it frustrating and deflating sometime because of the vastness of the software, Check out this video. I think you'll I think you'll really like it.